that working? Is that doing it? Did that? There we go. Ah. <sighs> I accidentally did like 10 seconds of live on not this video that I'd set up and just some random one that just started. So, hello. <laughs> Technological mistakes already abound. It's a short show. Only got like an hour and 15 minutes today. So, deal with it. Um. Oh, reminders right off the bat. I've got a whole bunch of of uh, uh, Eclipse glasses that I'm sending out, these suckers. So by all means, in the PO box down below, send me a self-addressed stamped envelope and tell me how many glasses you need and I will send them to you. I have like a thousand of them to give away. So um, yeah, so send me a self-addressed envelope. I send you Eclipse glasses. They're selling for a premium right now on eBay for like tens and tens of dollars. You can get them for free from me. And from Eclipse Tickets, who uh, also donated a whole bunch to me a while ago. Uh, so yeah, woo, do that. Okay, news, monkey. Uh, looks like more things are getting pushed off in the BBBY court case. We have not heard yet on the uh, late claim uh, uh, filing ruling or the uh, stalking horse that's been pushed off since October. Every month gets pushed away. Comes up, about to do it, about to do it, about to do it, and they're like, mm, next month. And so the agenda gets pushed again. Uh, this, to me, is we're not going to deal with this until Ryan Cohen's pump and dump case is kaput. Once that's done, then we'll address all these things, credit bids, blah, blah, blah. People get their equity. But until then, no, we're just going to keep pushing it off so you keep twiddling your thumbs. Um... Commercial real estate is really just eating shit. Uh, office spaces are now 20% empty across the entire country, not just all commercial real estate in general, but office spaces in particular. Um, something ridiculous like 40% of renters in Miami are are behind on rent. Um, these, are, these are the type of numbers that we were seeing when COVID hit and people didn't have jobs, right? So... What's what do we do about that? Well, um, regional banks are going to die because BTFP is over with now. So now they're going to have to take like predatory financing from from uh, hedge funds and market makers if that's going to be how they survive. And then they're not going to survive that way. Um, it's going to be it's going to be brutal. And a lot of folks are like, well, you know, uh, if 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 the banks really needed the money, they would they would take it a whole bunch right before the end. I think they don't have the collateral to do it. I think they've maxed out how much they can borrow against. And that's why we weren't seeing a borrowing spree at the end because they don't have the collateral. They, they do not have the assets to borrow against for this. And they maxed themselves out a year ago and they've been sitting on that ever since hoping to pay it back. And it's not going to happen. We saw a pension fund sell their $70 million share in a New York office building for $1. That's how bad it's getting, right? A 24 story building in Allentown, Pennsylvania, not the biggest city in the world, uh, uh, just sold for like $20 a square foot. It's the biggest office building in the Lehigh Valley, which is a pretty populous area and $20 a square foot. You'd be lucky to get a mobile home for $20 a square foot. That's what the that's that's below rental market price, right? Like you you go to you go to a city and you want to rent something, you're probably paying thirty dollars a square foot or more. So you're buying a twenty four story office building for less than you could rent it for. The market is shitting the bed, and the banks know it, the Fed knows it, the Treasury knows it, all of Wall Street knows it, and they're just kind of like waiting for the shoe to drop for the first bank to just be like, you know what? We don't have it. We're done. And it's coming, man. It is coming. So do I have another thing I was going to mention monkey. I forget. I have to look at the thing here. Uh, do, 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 do. Nope. That's all. That's all the main stuff I had. Okay. So then that means I can do uh, this. <laughs> Six, five, four, three, two, one. 
Where you little dog? Look at yourself. Houston, we have a problem. Oh, it's just such a soft ear. Oh, it's so soft. Scratch it forever. Turn it off, Houston. Double check, make sure everything's off. I think it is. Okay, so to the phones. The chill face was first. Good job. Uh, personal name tried. Brandon Wells tried. <laughs> Jason Blackwell. Houston, I bought my wife a stripper pole. The salesman asked me if I was going to put it up myself. I said, no, I'll probably put it in the living room. <laughs> Jason Blackwell. Hey, avocados. They say alligators can grow 18 feet. I've only seen them with four. Uh, and then chill face wants to know the contact info for that salesman. <laughs> Forest Fire, Houston, haven't been in chat in a while. Could you explain why transfer to AST is necessary? I mean, it's not necessary. It's just was recommended by the company because uh, according to S1, they filed earlier this year and then filed several more times before being told to rejigger the entire thing. Um, Nextbridge wants to split off subsidiary. And they said they're only going to be sending shares in that subsidiary to those who are registered with AST. And from their press release in January, where they intimated that they're working closely with uh, the folks behind T0 and blockchaining stocks, makes me believe that what NextBridge is going to do eventually when they get the approval from, from the SEC is they are going to issue everybody shares on T0 for the subsidiary, the NUCO, NUCO and uh, immediately every single solitary short on NextBridge is going to have to cover that blockchain share and won't be able to without paying a giant price. And I think that's the trap that they are setting. So if you want first opportunity to sell uh, that blockchain share for an absolute premium, sky high, ridiculous, impossible price, you're gonna to wanna to be an AST. And that to me, it was worth it. So that's why I transferred over. Now, that doesn't say that the, the shorts go in, they buy that sh that blockchain share and they deliver it to somebody who's in, I don't know, Schwab or TD Ameritrade or whatever. And that person then has the opportunity to sell that premium, high-end, super-duper blockchain stock to another short who needs to deliver somebody else. Estimations are that that... that token that that blockchain stock would have to be sold probably five or six times in order to to cover all of the uh uh positions of shorted next bridges out there so it's just if you want first first crack at it you're going to want to be an ast so i'm over there now the federal government told next bridge like hey you gotta do some more filings on this potential company before we'll approve this thing and so now they've got to sort of actually split off the company, make it a separate entity, and then do all the work on that and then refile with, with, the, with the government. Um, it may be unnecessary to do if they come to some sort of agreement with uh, uh, FINRA and the SEC. But eh, we, if, if they don't, then they got that thing in the back pocket. Be like, look, either give us the settlement or we're going to blow your shit up. And uh, I think that's kind of the the threat that's there. And I think they're starting to listen. So we'll 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 see where it goes. Um do, 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 do. chill face, like, share, and subscribe. Yes, like, share, and subscribe. And uh pet dogs and cats. Belgian way, I like everywhere in life, not first. No, you were late to the party, my man. Waffles are always first in my heart. Does that help? <laughs> yes. Uh, Yogi2012, I just rewatched your interview with Ron. Ended up buying some No Labs. I'm optimistic about the company, but I looked up Newegg after hearing he was involved. What happened to them? One dollar. He was uh, uh, Egghead Software, which later became Newegg after he had sold everything. They were originally uh, like a electronic store for computers. 
So you'd go and you'd like, I need a hard drive. You would go to Egghead Software and you'd buy your hard drive or you build your computer or you get your Windows CDs or whatever you need. And that was their thing. They started in the 80s. They got, I think they originally got bought up by the mid 90s. And that's when, that's when Ron was out. I, to, I can't remember the exact timeline. Um, but yeah, so then, so then online retailing started to kick the shit out of those specialty shops and uh, Newegg was born online so they still exist online i i bought some things from them during covid like i got a when i had to do my classes online during covid i bought a big screen tv uh a scratch and dent one from new egg for like 40 bucks it's like a 50 inch tv and i put it in the garage and then i hooked up a laptop to it and so i could i could have my slides behind me uh and i could do my zooms or record videos for my classes with they could see the slides uh, handy dandy little thing, but I, I'm, I'm not building many computers these days, so I don't really use them anymore, but they, they had a squeeze. Newegg had a squeeze in May of 2021 where they shot to $77 and that was, uh, due to a merger and QCIP change. So they did some sort of merger. They had a QCIP change, uh, 90 days later, everyone was forced to close their positions or at least cover them. And the stock price went to 77 bucks. Uh, and then since then it's been like, back down to a dollar. So they had, they had their own little squeeze recently. 4ZZ9, please tell me there's still hope, Houston. There's always hope. All you got to do is be zen and twiddle them thumbs. That's it. That's your, that's your job. Twiddle them thumbs, be zen. Scott Paul and Jamie earnings day announced March 18th. So the 18th is what? Uh, it's a Monday. Whoa. Okay. Is that official? Because that means I got to load up on Friday. Um, GME Q4 earnings announced. Earnings announcement. March 19th, 19th, Scott, 19th. So that's next Tuesday, right? Come on, come on calendar, pop up. Yeah, next Tuesday. So doing earnings on a Tuesday, I normally do it on Wednesday, interesting. Um, EPS forecast is for 25 cents a share is the earnings per share. I, I have a feeling they're gonna beat that and they're gonna beat it big. That's and they're going to announce a dividend. Those are my predictions. They're going to beat the earnings uh, per share forecast by like 75 cents, something huge. And they're going to announce a dividend. Those are my two predictions. Um, you can look at, uh, okay, how do I get to, I get to this. And oops, I don't want that one. I want, uh, turn that one off. Turn off. I want this one. Come on. Why is my mouse such a dick? Okay. This one, yeah, that's what I want. Okay, so you can see uh, uh, huge earnings announced um, last year, right? And then like, oh, they lost a little bit. They lost a teeny amount. They lost a teeny amount. They did one cent particular the last two quarters. And that to me says, we're setting you up, you dumbasses. And this, this is gonna be a big giant bar, y'all. So. Here we go. I think it's going to rock and roll, man. It's going to rock and it's going to roll. So March 19th, that means this Friday, I got to do my play. And it's on Tuesday. So I was really hoping to be a Wednesday. They give me two days of them building up the price. Hmm. Hmm. I can still do it. I was really hoping for a Wednesday. But that's okay. That's okay. All right. Well, we'll see if Houston's option play works out for us in the end here. Interesting article from Kelly Reed. Canada faces a series of crises that will test in the coming years. Uh, Royal Canadian Mounted Police warns 
They state, the situation will probably deteriorate further in the next five years as the early effects of climate change and global recession add weight to the ongoing crisis. Well, yeah, if the, if the MPs are, the amount of police are, are, are uh, worried, then what the hell? <laughs> right? <laughs> so, hmm. That's a, uh, hmm. Hmm. Yeah, things are gonna get weird in Canada, but I'm, I'm sure they're gonna get weird here too. It's just that we're we're we got our head in the sand more. Bill Bates, Houston, can you go into what uh, the no MARD rating means versus the odds of FDA approval based on the requirements for glucose monitors? I don't know enough about the tech, tech, uh, technicality of it. I do know that the MARD, which has to do with like the uh, accuracy of the readings. Um, cause what they do is they, they, they read you and then they draw blood and measure it in a lab and see how, how accurate the readings were. And they're tweaking the algorithm so it can identify things better. And it's slowly, you know, slowly getting better, um, is on par better than the invasive glucose monitors, the Dexcoms, the things that people put in their bodies. So it seems to me that if they approve the Dexcom one at 12% or whatever, that they would approve the non-invasive one at 11 uh, what your goal is to get that number as low as possible. Um, and you, you're going to, you're going to run into issues if you aren't actually like counting, you know, blood glucose in a microscope, like you would in a lab. So that's the best I know. I, I don't know enough about what the FDA requirements are for that. But, uh, the fact that everyone at no labs is pretty stoked to announce that that's to me is a good enough sign. <clears throat> Alexander K, it's a beautiful day for some problems. It's a gorgeous day for some problems. Uh, is it factory? If Bitcoin go up, why are, why are Bitcoin mining companies going down? Uh, example, Wolf. I don't know. But I do know that US dollar tether coin printed several billion dollar more billion dollars more in uh, their tether coins. And whenever they do that, there's a direct correlation between US dollar printing and Bitcoin flying through the roof. Um, so it's like a, what was the correlation? It's like a 200% correlation. Let me, okay. Um, USDT minting correlates to Bitcoin price. Uh, here we go. BDC consulting. This one. This is from last year. Um, new study finds that using used to tether coin supply data to time Bitcoin market entries and exits can increase return on investment to 229%. Basically what this article says is that whenever tether prints, mints coins, Bitcoin goes up. Why? Because tether is a scam. Tether makes coins. Those coins are always worth $1 according to tether. And then they use those coins to buy a whole bunch of Bitcoin, which causes a demand on Bitcoin and so the price goes through the roof. And then when they, when they're done minting is when we start to see little drops. Now we saw a drop on Bitcoin, I think Friday started to go down like 5%. And then all of a sudden, uh, Saturday, they started minting billions of dollars more tether coin and the price shot through $70,000. Now it's now it's all time high 70 something thousand bucks. Um, this is because US dollar tether coin is the largest financial scam in history. That's, that's it. They don't have your money. Your cash doesn't exist. They never, they barely use cash to do anything with that. They just create the coins out of thin air and buy Bitcoin with it and then sell that for other stuff and get out. That's exactly what they've been doing. They don't have your money. They are a scam. And, uh, this eventually... You know, people who involved with Tether are probably going to go to prison. And when they do, people are going to want to get their money out of Bitcoin. But the money won't exist because it never did in the first place. So, be interesting to see where it goes on that. Uh, you guys can read this whole thing here if you want. Do, do, do. And now there's over $100 billion in Tether that has been minted. And they do not have $100 billion in their accounts. I can guarantee you that. Uh, when the feds went looking a couple of years ago, they only found three cents on the dollar in the, in the accounts they claimed that had, you know, hundreds of billions or tens of billions in it at the time. They don't, they don't have your, they don't have your money. It's not there. 
But I don't know why the, why the miners are going down. Uh, maybe because the halving event is coming up and they're going to be making less off of off of uh, each coin they mine. Perhaps that might be it. Owen Saunders, no left honey pot, surely. I don't know. Oh, your friend is here. Hayes Productions. What's with all the short volatility ETF trade Bloomberg is hyping up lately? Mm, I don't know. I don't. I don't have a subscription to Bloomberg, so I haven't been able to see that. Send me a, a link, and I'll I'll see what I can read. Suljo is here. Big landing program program ends today. Any thoughts? Banks are screwed. That's my thoughts. Without without some sort of equivalent funding program, I don't think the uh, the discount window can provide enough liquidity for the banks. And I don't think the FDIC has enough cash on hand to deal with what's coming. So, when, and we can't print right now. We can't print money right now because we're still dealing with inflation over 2%. If inflation was under 2%, we would be printing trillions right now to stave off bank failures. But we won't do anything until the banks themselves start failing in mass. And then we're like, all right, because that will... That will, inflation will drop, mass layoffs. We'll be looking at, you know, hundreds of thousands of people losing their jobs every month. And then they can start printing. But until then, they're not going to do it, right? Oh, it's, does the monkey butt want a blanket? You can't, you can't go in a blanket if you're on top of the blanket. You gotta go, come on, come on. You can't go in a blanket if you're on top of it. You, you, you gotta learn this one of these days. Okay. You want your lamb? Lamb? You can't. I can't move. All right. There it is. Okay. For a smart dog, she's really dumb sometimes. You do dumb butt. Okay. <laughs> oh, look who's here. The, the the intro people don't like the music for. <laughs> Okay. Oh, turn off the Batman intro, dummy. All right. Joseph Lee, it matter can't be created. Oh, if matter can't be created or destroyed, then where does the weight I burn working out go? <laughs> well, um, matter can be created. And is almost certainly immediately destroyed, leaving behind a gamma ray photon. That happens. But in the large scheme of things, you know, entropy of the universe, blah, blah, blah. Um, where the weight goes that you that you burn leaves as CO2. Like most of your weight loss is through your breath and not through you taking giant massive shits in the morning. Uh, most of your weight loss is breath. So you breathe in, oxygen comes in, enters into your lungs. Uh, gets carried through your bloodstream and then starts combining with carbon to make CO2, right? And that CO2 goes back into your lungs, fires out your bronchi and out your breath. And so you're pulling carbon atoms out of yourself every single time you breathe out. And that's where your weight loss is coming from, which is why when you exercise, right? And your temperature goes up and your heart rate goes up, it means your blood's pumping faster, carrying more oxygen through your body, carrying out more carbon, more CO2. And uh, yeah, so you're breathing heavy. When you're breathing heavy, you're losing weight. So that's that's why you got to get your heart rate up and uh, do exercise in order to, to lose weight more efficiently. Now, you can like starve yourself and lose weight, uh, calorie restrict, because then you're taking in less carbon and uh, your body still does a normal breathing thing. It's got to get that carbon from somewhere. So calorie restriction does it too, but it's healthier to um, eat an appropriate amount and then breathe heavy from working out. So that's where... That is how you lose weight. Owen Saunders, can you turn the audio down on the intro and other videos, please? It blasts my eardrums every time. Is it, are the audios very high on this? Uh, okay, let's. We will turn those down, I guess. Uh, do, 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 do.
Okay. Okay, that's not... All right, how do I... Do I have... I think they're down. We're going to uh, cross our fingers and hope that they're down because I think they are. I don't know. We'll find out. Michael Harrow, why did Bruno bail? Uh, the drama llama seems to be hitting hard. And uh, yeah, so Br Bruno, Bruno canceled. Apparently he's not going to post DD anymore or talk to people. And that's his prerogative. Uh, I was curious to figure out what his goals were for the lawsuit. Um, personally, I, I, I don't, I don't think a lawsuit is going to go anywhere, but I'd like to hear his arguments on it. Uh, all I care about is a credit bid. I don't care about the waterfall. I don't care about cash payouts from as, you know, creditors get paid off. We get some cash. I don't care about that. I care about a credit bid, the nulls being used and getting new equity. That's all. That's it. So, um, uh, but I, I would like to hear his argument and what he was hoping to uncover. And uh, that'd be nice to figure out. But, you know, yeah, it is what it is. We sure we'll hear one way or the other at some point. Dearest, Jumerica Moas cost is trading way below book value. Yep. It is. Uh, cost is extremely, extremely low float. It's like 2 million shares. Um, what was that? Two bucks right now? Uh, 2.53. And it had been as high, I think during the squeeze, it had gotten to like 100, 100 bucks or something. $64. January 29th, 2021. Before that, it was $2. And then almost immediately, bam, 64 bucks. And it traded pretty high. It was in the 20s for a while. Had a spike in June 2021, where I think it had, intraday hit like 44 bucks. Uh, and then it's been like a steady, steady downhill turn the entire time. Um, shares outstanding. The cost is 9.25 million shares outstanding and 5.24 million held by insiders. So their float is four million right now. That doesn't count institutional investments. So so they have an extremely small float, which made them very squeezable. But they don't have a, they don't have an options chain on them, so it makes it harder to like get things like a gamma squeeze going. So they just kind of they're in the basket with GME. So when GME does things, they seem to do things. Yeah, uh, DRS America Fidelity doing layoffs. Uh, Bitcoin precious metals popping. Smells like a market crash coming. I have a feeling that they're trying to dump shares into retail. Um, oh, crap. Uh, who's the guy that he sent me like 12 million messages last night? Uh, it was like the... Where are you? Uh, oops, that's wrong. <laughs> I got the wrong one. Okay. It was. Where are you? Not Dirt Evader. Not that one. Not that one. Not that one. Not that one. Um. Oh, for crying out loud. Go oh, finance a lot. Yeah, finance a lot. Uh, posted a whole bunch of stuff in the last couple of weeks about how dark pool trading is disappearing all of a sudden. <clears throat> Meaning that these big institutions aren't trading with each other, that they are taking what they have and they are dumping it into retail and letting the price be known so that the prices go and they're gonna keep dumping into retail. They're gonna dump, 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 dump. And then the bottom falls out, we're stuck with all the bags and they go, oh, bummer man, can we get a bailout from the government? And uh, that seems to be what's happening. So uh, check out Finance a lot on, on, on Twitter. He has been posting a whole bunch about like dark pool volumes and that the dark pool volumes starting at the end of February just dried up. Uh, that they are selling to retail to make us be the bag holders. And they know they know that shit's coming. 
and we're going to be stuck holding all of it. So just be warned. Commercial real estate is going to bring everything to its knees because <laughs> banks are toast. Coffee, Donuts and Homer. The GME warehouse in Pennsylvania is closing. 155 workers losing their job per the GME notice to the state. Layoffs start this week. Hmm. Hmm. Is that the one that was like the brand new warehouse they opened? Which is kind of interesting. Would not market crash and BBBY Knowles are dead thoughts. Why would the Knowles be dead? There's no reason for the Knowles to be dead. There's an, there's a going concern. So the Knowles are preserved. Uh, and you can, it can be years until those Knowles have to get used as, as witness with Washington Mutual. It was 10 years between Washington Mutual going under that stock floundering in the OTC before popping back up as WIMU um, and being worth $74. So, I mean, I don't want to be that long. I want it to be like now, uh, but no, the Knowles aren't dead. The Knowles, the Knowles are still alive. <clears throat> Cali Bowl 2009 Miami restaurants listed for sale are popping up all over. People seem desperate to get rid of them. This implies commercial leases are on the hook. Hmm. Interesting. I, I wonder how many restaurants in Miami signed long-term leases and they're still stuck under seeing that like empty spaces are, are going to be a lot cheaper very soon. Interesting. Interesting. Kelly Bowl. Coffee Jones and Homer, Kentucky and Pennsylvania distri distribution centers are closing under performing stores, honing the business to profitability. Also, Desne. I think it's smart. They aren't keeping any fat. Uh, dearest America Moas, I'm trading my house for an empty warehouse. I'll live upstairs and throw dope ass concerts downstairs. I had this dream in high school. I was like, my old warehouse. Just put a mobile home in the middle of the warehouse and then I could live in the mobile home and then just like have all this tarmac to do whatever I wanted and not get rained on. That would be awesome. Confidence in Homer. I sent an email to MMAT and their IT sensors emails that tell the board they suck. <laughs> uh, they do suck. Okay. Michael Harrow, my next bridge was under a certain QSIP in Fidelity. After DRS and AST, it is now a different QSIP. Confidence, confidence of Homer. I voted no in selling more shares. F that. Talking about M. Matt. Mm hmm. Scott Paul is thinking aircraft hangar, but yes. There's some really cool, really cool houses uh, that are built on like private airstrips. Have you guys looked at those things? And it's like a house attached to a hangar. There's one that's uh, at Apex Field here near me. And so you. You go into the hangar and then the facade of the house looks like like New York brownstone buildings at the back of the hangar. It's really cool looking. Um, I look them up. They're neat. Th those in the houses that are on like private racetracks, they're always like a house built around a garage and it's really cool. <laughs> Do you ask America Moas, are there bathrooms in a hangar? Uh, there may be, but at the Pulte hangar, I had to pee in an outhouse. So perhaps not. Or maybe he's like, I don't want these ruffians using my special toilet. That's for me and me alone. So there might, there might be, it just, he didn't want us using it. So we had to use the, uh, plastic boxes outside. Constantly shame, did you buy the GME calls you're talking about last week? My plan is not to buy them until the Friday before earnings. That's going to be this Friday. Uh, they may, they may, because they announced earnings, they may have some price action this week, but um, no, it went down today. That's good news. So I headed down some more. So that means, you know, if it keeps doing that all week, then uh, I get those weeklies for cheap. But yeah. That's that's the goal. So I'd be looking at buying Friday. Hopefully there's green Monday leading up to earnings. Selling those uh, perhaps Monday or Tuesday morning and then getting a boatload 
just before close of weeklies on that on Tuesday. That'd be the goal. So if we go to ye old uh this this thing. Drink. Open that thing. Oh, okay. turn off the calculator intro. I have to actually go to calculator. But first, I got the options chain up here. So this is the stuff closing this week. Um, the price is fourteen forty four. So fourteen five, about thirty seven, thirty four to thirty seven cents per share on on those options. Uh, by the end of the week, these next week ones. Let's look at the next week ones because that's uh, where. That's come on. Open my mouse is just being such a jerk. It's March twenty second. Right now it's about a buck. It's about a hundred dollars per uh, option by Friday. If there hasn't been too much price action, um, the the theta decay on it will probably drop them to 35, 40 cents, somewhere in there. So if I put like two grand into this, and it's at about 40 cents, um, turn you off calculator. There we go. So this is the goal. So, we got that. It cost them about maybe forty dollars each, which I can get fifty of them. This is this is pretty close to being in the money, right? I expect the price to go up probably two three dollars leading up to earnings. That's usually what happens. So the price might be up to like seventeen seventeen fifty somewhere around there. So if it goes up three dollars per, uh, then I'm at fifteen k. I'm gonna take one or two thousand of that and I'm gonna buy at the money puts. Is that the money puts right now? Um, it costs about a buck right now, but they'll be significantly less by that Tuesday. Probably like what are, what are the puts at right now for this week? Uh, puts right now, eh, forty cents, sixteen cents at at fourteen dollars. So probably buy a whole bunch, two thousand dollars worth of these puts, right? And then I take the rest of this and I would buy calls that are about five bucks above and so I'd put it like 17, $18 and right now they're at five, six cents, but by that Tuesday, they're probably at four or three or four cents. So if that's 13,000 of them, $13,000 worth, uh, divide that by, let's say four cents. So that's 3,250, uh, call options that would expire on the Friday after earnings. That's a lot. Uh, if, the, if, if the shorts do what they normally do and they hammer the price down, I get my money back via those puts. If they crush earnings and they announce a dividend, I expect the price on the stock to go up maybe 10 bucks or more after hours. It went up $11 after hours last year doing the Q4 reporting when they beat earnings by like 70 cents. So um, if they beat earnings by 70 cents, they go up 10 bucks. I will have about $500 on each one of these things. And then you're a millionaire. So it's a lotto ticket play. Complete 100% lotto ticket play. But I'm not going to buy a single one of those options until Friday. I'm going to wait until Theta crushes the uh, the price on them. Because there's going to be a lot of implied volatility leading up to earnings. The implied volatility goes up um, the closer we get. And right now, implied volatility is at like 125%, 100%. Uh, it can get to like the 500s the closer and closer we get um to to earnings so yeah uh, that's 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 the goal and uh and and if the price remains pretty high through that friday i will buy a whole bunch more calls looking for a gamma squeeze from that friday um next week is next week uh, the quadruple witching is that why they're doing it on on the 18th or is it this friday is the quadruple witching what is a lot there? That's on. A whole bunch there. What about? Sorry, just looking at, at how many open interest. Uh, that might be this Friday's quadruple witching. Dang it. 
really hoping they do the earnings before that so there would be a huge gamma the next week. But anyway, um, yeah, so that's that's the play. We'll see if it works. If it doesn't work, uh, then hopefully I get my money back. And I go, oh, well, that didn't work. But if it does work, well, new war rig. Calculators are fun. Calculator game's the best game. Uh, Whisker Biscuit, what size envelope do you need to fit the glasses? Um, I've put eight of them into a little envelope, into like uh, like like one of these size envelopes in the past. Uh, I don't know if people got them or not. If you're if you're gonna do that, put a few, maybe a couple of stamps on there. Um, I think they have like the weight limit and the thickness limit um, for for one stamp. Uh, so yeah, so put a couple of stamps on there. Other people sent me like full on big envelopes. Like one of these people, I think wanted 12. And so they sent me a big envelope and I put 12 in there. Uh, so yeah. Um, so yeah, that's... As long as you have enough postage on there to fit enough and you feel happy about that, cool. So put a couple, maybe put like a dollar, dollar fifty worth of postage on there and you're still getting a screaming deal because people are selling like single ones of these for like 10 bucks right now. Uh, do, do, do. Oh, that's not important. Okay. Different lime, Houston. Have you seen the graph of the ocean temperature this year? Hard to not think the oceans are already dead and not just going through the motions. Oh no, oceans are toast. Um, they they they're toast. We've we basically maximized the heat in the atmosphere, and now we're warming up the oceans. Um. It takes a while for the heat to transfer into the oceans, and they're now warming at insane rates, which means which are going to make for super storms and just horrible, horrible summers here to come for pretty much everyone on Earth. Uh, not good. I don't know what's going on. I don't uh, to pontificate on that too much more, but yeah, the oceans are warming. The important thing is the 28 degrees Celsius thermocline. Uh, that is where crazy storms are made and that that thermocline is extending from the tropics further every year making the possibility of super storms greater i mean they're talking about about uh now creating a category six hurricane because we've got category five and there's so many storms that are so powerful right now that they are an appreciable percentage above the category five rating that now they're talking about category six storms and because category five was what like 145 150 mile an hour winds um Cat five storm category five hurricane to do hundred. Okay, I have, let's look up let's just storm categories hurricane storm categories. There we go. All right, that's what I want. Uh, boom. Okay, category one, 74 to 95. Category two, 96 to 110. So these are like 20 mile an hour, 15 mile an hour differences. Category three, 111 to 130. Four, 130, 155. And five is 155 and greater. The thing is, is that we're having like two or three storms every year that have 190 to 200 mile an hour sustained winds, which, I mean, there should probably be category six, category seven <laughs> at this point. So... Uh, like one, like this should be category five should probably be 155 to 170 and then category six would be 170 above. Um, but yeah, they, the, we're having multiple storms or super storms that have wind, sustained winds well above 190 miles an hour. And that's nearly 40 miles an hour difference from where category five starts, which is why they want to start doing category six hurricanes. They just did back in the day. They didn't think hurricanes could get bigger than that. Um, and now we are seeing several all the time, every year that, that are bigger than that. Warming oceans, more more warm water, more energy to go into the storm. Whisker Biscuit, thoughts on wait staff that doesn't write down your order, you're not impressing. Uh, I never wrote down orders. I could do an order of 
25 people at a table. As long as they went, as long as, as long as they went in order around the table, I could memorize it. Um, yeah, I never bothered writing things down. Today, I can't read my own handwriting anyway, and it takes away from me just memorizing. Like I never took notes in class. I just memorized what the teacher said, and that was good to go. Um, not everyone can do that. I am special <laughs> in, that, in that I can remember your order. And uh, yeah, so. Yeah, you just tell me what it is, and I just pop it right back in the computer. And my short memory deletes it all, and I'm on to the next table. But, yeah. Uh, Cover does Homer. 2.5 million shares available to hammer Jimmy down if they do have a good earnings call. I don't know if it'll make much of a difference if they really crush it. They may wait uh, for the price to shoot up, and then they'll hammer it down in the days to come. And that's when they'll short it, if the earnings are really good. If the earnings are like, oh, we we hit our earnings per share at 25 cents, then they're gonna be like, oh, fuck you. Blah. But if they say we hit our earnings per we beat our earnings per share, we're at a dollar oh five a share, they're they're going to hold on to those shorts and they're gonna wait for the price to spike up 10, 20 bucks, and then they'll short it down to make a bunch of money off of it. Don't see your shade if you're just tuning in, finger the like button. Be gentle though. Be gentle with it. Don't don't smash it. Uh, different Lime, Houston, with earnings on a Tuesday, does that affect your options plan? It does a bit. I was hoping for like two or three days of price action. I don't know if we'll see like a $3 gain on that Monday. May go a little bit through Tuesday. So maybe I'll sell Tuesday and then buy in a whole bunch of options above that. Hmm. It affects it a little bit. I was really hoping for a Wednesday. Wednesday earnings, but um, because I, I would prefer actually a Thursday earnings would probably be the best because if they do really well, the price is really high. They have that Friday to try and pump, smash the price down, and I don't think they get it very high. So you get a gamma the next week. That's a whole bunch of options going the money. Uh, that's that would be ideal, but I don't know why they're doing Tuesday instead of a Thursday. Turkish Houston, so should I ask, where's my money, Lebowski, in the year 20XX? In the year 2000. Uh, poor taste in porn. Are we sure the earnings date is real? I think it's an estimated date. No, the NASDAQ said that was the announced earnings date, was the 19th. Let me look it up again just to make sure. Uh, GME earnings date announced. Earnings announcement for GME uh wait there's a there's an asterisk next to that so let me what's the asterisk mean um what's the asterisk mean upcoming earnings date is derived from algorithm oh no that's not the announcement Ooh. okay that's not the official one so let's go back to Next year, earnings estimated between March 15th. So maybe that's not the, the earnings date. Expected, expected. Yeah, the NASDAQ had an asterisk next to that. I did not notice that. So, um, yeah, the asterisk right there. You can see it. Boom. And then you scroll all the way down, all the way down. And it says, upcoming earnings date is derived from an algorithm based on a company's, on the company's historical reporting dates. It's possible this date will be updated in the future, but once the company announces the actual date, data provider, Zach's Investment Research, Zach's blah, blah, blah. Okay, so maybe if we go to GME Investor Relations. Hmm? Nothing about earnings, SEC filings, newsroom contact, governance, nothing, nothing official on here yet. So maybe it's not happening the 19th. Hmm. Maybe we, maybe, ah, uh, I just announced it so I know what I'm going to do, man. <sighs> okay, so we'll sit back and, and twiddle our thumbs some more until they announce. Normally they like to announce like a couple weeks ahead of time so we have, no, we have an idea what's going to happen, but uh, they really seem to be holding this close to their chest this time. Por qué? Hmm. Well, well, yes, that does affect my options plan. All right. 
Oh, crud. I missed some super chats. I apologize. Uh, still, Joe, banks screwed, so we squeeze? Well, some things, the, the negative beta stuff will squeeze for sure. Uh, estimated GME price after earnings, says Bill Coin. That's Bill Coin. Um, it depends what the earnings are. If they meet the expectations, I expect them to be hammered down. Like, oh, yeah, well, they met their 25 cents per share. We're going to hammer them back down to 13 again or whatever. Uh, if they beat the earnings per share, like last year, they beat the earnings per share by 69 or 70 cents. Um, the price went up $11 after hours. So for us, current price, that'd be like a $24, $25 share. Uh, but then again, like the price kind of eked up as the days, as the days, in the, in the days leading up to the uh, earnings. So hmm, that was like, I think it was like 17 to $28 or something after hours. And then they push it down the next day. Um, if they do, if they beat or crush earnings like last year and they announce a dividend, I can see the price going up more than 11 bucks as a result. Because uh, if they're announcing a dividend, all of a sudden they're, they're going for blue chip status and not, and not smaller mid cap. Like they're like, we're going to be the real deal. We're offering investors money for investing in our company. You get a buck per year per share, which comes out to probably four or 5% of the current stock price. And I, I could see, you know, they announce a dividend and if the dividends in the range of like 25 cents a share per quarter, then, you know, 20 bucks, the price going up. That puts the equivalent share price to pre-split at like 120, which is where it was trading pretty consistently for all of 2021 and most of 2022 until they did the, uh, the split. Um, yeah, that's, that seems fair to me, but I'm going to try and play both sides of it. At least get my money back. If, if the shorts do hammer it down. But yeah. Okay. Uh, back to where I was, where was my spot? There it was. Okay. Ocean temperature one. That's the estimate. Okay. Uh, Corporate Walnut, how can No Labs hypothetically see if someone consumed cannabis? You said in passing. No Labs device is a radio transmitter. So it, it transmits in, in radio and microwave. And what it does is you tune it to the resonant frequency of whatever molecule you're looking for. And when you when you hit that molecule with the resonant frequency, it vibrates and hums and sends a radio signal back to the receiver of the device. And so you could tune it to THC and see if THC is in someone's system uh, and whether it's active or not. Uh, you can see the cannabids. So if like they've been, they've been actively, actively like smoking, you can see how much is in their system. Um, you can tune it to theoretically to cancer cells, to poisons or toxins, to um, microplastics, whatever the resonant frequency is of the of the thing you're looking for, you just tune the antenna to the resonant frequency and look for it. And uh, the more power you have in the antenna, the the easier you can you can see what's in there. That's why that's why they kind of talk about it as being like a tricorder device. Right? You know, Star Trek, you got the tricorder, and you're like scan, scan. Oh, it looks like he's got this cancer and blah blah blah. Um, theoretically, you could have. I'm not sure how tunable the individual antenna would be, or if you just make antenna to those frequencies and use it. Uh, but that's that's the basis of their entire tech. Um, bank term fund is from JM. Bank term funding program was stealth quantitative easing, according to Peter Schiff. Uh, banks knew the window would close, borrowed tons of money, and never intended to pay it back. Yeah, I mean, ye you're drowning, you clamor for whatever, whatever thing can keep you afloat at the time. Right. Um, that's what they did. And now all of the assets that they used, their commercial real estate loans and crappy mortgage backed securities for Airbnbs and stuff. Um, they used all of those assets as collateral on these loans. And those assets are worth dog shit. They're never going to be able to pay those loans back. <laughs> These aren't the, they're going under. Coffee Duns and Homer. It would be funny if the Fed created Bitcoin and Tether to suck liquidity out of the system. 
That would actually be kind of funny. Uh, Scott Lumley, Houston. What do you think pops off first? No Labs or GameStop? Uh, no Labs. I don't think No Labs real pop is until they they file and or get approved for FDA approval. Uh, so they're going to tread water and you have like little bumps and herps and gurps uh, as they make announcements and they get hammered down by shorts. They make announcements. But, but when they get FDA approval, then it's, then it's game on at that point forward. And then GameStop, GameStop can can do some real damage when they do earnings. <clears throat> Marlon Rivera, uh, when do we get monies from Sears? Not a clue, not a clue at all. Chris Taylor, Houston, sorry, all out of stock questions, but I. Bought a self-study course on geology and mineralogy by Robert Hayes and PhD, and I blame you for that. <laughs> I'm enjoying it and learning a lot. Thanks. You're welcome. Uh... Anthony Cordell, happy birthday, Houston. How's your car coming along? It is not at the moment. Um, I still got to get the dent out of the back. I keep scheduling my buddy who has got the uh, frame straightening machine and... His plan now is like, oh, it's not balustrading. We'll just cut at the pinch welds and put a new uh, uh, trunk deck in their frame. And so they, he and one of his employees were at junkyards all weekend looking for it. And I had not heard back if they found one. I just want it pulled out. I don't care if it's nice. <laughs> just want to be able to put the light in, close the trunk, and drive. That's all I want. <sighs> but until then, I got a really pretty... Z4 sitting in my driveway that uh, has got a really ugly rear end. Bumper sitting in my back porch. Uh, Hoddle, New Zealand. Happy birthday, Houston. Time to buy puts on banks. Maybe July weeklies. Uh, I think some of the banks will be toast by summer. Um, others may be when like fall comes along and they realize everyone's de defaulting on everything. But um, I think a couple of regional banks will probably be toast before then. People are inverse plants. We are. <laughs> okay. 414 up 16 minutes. Billy Max, seeing more bad reports on Boeing. Even John Allard dedicated a show recently. You called it. No, Bo Boeing, I mean, being here in Seattle, we we hear about Boeing all the time because it's one of the, was the largest employer in Washington until you know Microsoft and, and Amazon showed up uh, and was based here for so long. So that in, in like the top aeronautical engineering schools, University of Washington, like this is where engineers come from. Uh so we we're very familiar with with how Boeing operates, and the McDonnell Douglas Boeing merger was just so one sidedly awful. Like if Boeing had picked up McDonnell Douglas and be like, okay, we get your, we get your government contracts for all of your F sixteens and crap, um, cool. But they should have been like, and all of you executives at McDonnell Douglas who run your company like dog shit, you're out. That's what they should have done. But somehow. All the executives of McDonnell Douglas, the failing company, became in charge of Boeing, the company that was successful, and ruined Boeing. It's just so stupid. <laughs> like you have a company that's that's known for engineering, and you kick all the engineers out, and you have the business bros who have no idea how to engineer everything in charge. Well, what you're going to get is business bros know how, like, okay, I gotta cut costs. So this costs money. We're going to get rid of that. But the engineer's like, that costs money because those are our 900 quality assurance engineers. And they make sure we aren't putting out crap that's going to kill people. And the business bros are like, but we'll just not kill people. How about that? But you can't do that without having the quality assurance guys making sure that the bolts are tightened and the rivets are correct. And there's no cracks in the frame, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, and eventually, you know, you treat your employee, you treat uh, your manufacturers, your machinists and your fabricators and all those guys like crap. And they're going to, you know, I've been watching over their shoulder or t teaching them properly how to do this stuff. And the generations of like 
good employees are finally retiring and heading out and the new generation that comes in and like, well, I get paid dog shit and uh, I don't care. And my boss hates me and treats me like garbage. I'm just going to go through the motions, right? They have no connection between their work and the quality of the product that comes out leading to more work in the future. They don't care enough. They can go, they can go be a subway sandwich artist and make just as much money sometimes. Uh, so yeah, they, there needs to be more dedication to, to training employees, paying employees better and having quality assurance happen. And having the engineers in charge who knows what it takes to make a quality product. Uh, yeah. You know, if, if you had followed the engineer's plan for the 787, uh, right, it would have cost $5 billion to develop that plane. And then you had this plane flying around that was high quality. Instead, they're like, let's cut the development cost to $2.5 billion and we'll outsource everything. Then we'll save a bunch of money. And then they lost $25 billion off the bat because all the outsourced stuff was garbage. It didn't work. And now they've got dozens of planes sitting in the tarmac at Payne Field and Everett that will never be allowed to fly. They just sit there, rotting away. Uh, so in order to save $2.5 billion, they spent 10 times that and were behind schedule by like three years. Now, trying to cut costs on the 737 max we don't need uh two pitch sensors just one one pitch sensor is fine we don't need redundancy that's expensive so then they build a thousand of these jets without the redundancy and they keep crashing and having problems and then they get grounded for two years and end up losing probably 50 billion dollars as a result of trying to save some money on not having a redundant sensor it's just a dumb dumb system like it's like regulations. The regulators are there, not just to protect the consumers, but to protect the companies from themselves, right? And if you make sure the companies are doing a good job, then they won't lose a customer base and violate the thermocline trust. Boeing's at the point where they're violating the thermocline trust and no one's going to buy their products ever again. <laughs> that's that's it. You, you, you violate the thermocline trust and it's over. Uh, Elon did it with Twitter. He violated the thermocline trust almost immediately, and all of the good posters left. Uh, traffic is down 30% on Twitter, um, and most of the traffic that they have right now are, are bots. Uh, advertisers left, they'll never come back because they see Elon retweeting white supremacist stuff. I mean, he retweeted a tweet the other day that had a little, uh, 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 what do they call it? Uh, oh my gosh. Not an embossment, uh, watermark. There we go. Had a watermark that was like white people. <laughs> it was like a straight, straight white supremacist website. And he was like, yeah, thumbs up, uh, retweet. Like the thermocline, thermocline, thermocline of trust is gone. Advertisers will never come back to Twitter X, whatever, one, whatever wants to call it. Um, and, and that's, that's where we are. So, uh, Gardner's calling one sec. I put you guys on mute. Sorry. Gardner. Sorry, Gardner, my brother calling about the car. We're trying to figure out ways to get it fixed. Uh, where was I? Dear SG America, when you clean up the vacuum cleaner, you become the vacuum cleaner. It's true. Scott Pollan, New York Community Bank appears to be a cesspool of fraud and abuse. Anybody putting money in is trying to cover their, ta their tracks. Yeah, I, I don't think they survive. I think that they are so doomed with commercial real estate that that's it. Uh, 
Uh, Alexander K can re-edit some of the intros with lower volume with a tan loud for the night intro and chalupa intro. I I turned the volumes down on them. I think I think they're gonna be okay. I think I think they'll be fine. We'll be cool. Sismity four Houston. Now that we know earnings date, Jimmy, what's the call play? Well, apparently we don't know the earnings date. It's uh that's all estimate on the Nasdaq site. They have not announced yet. So. For me, the earnings play still stays the same. I just need to know a week ahead of time, and then that Friday I can I can do my do my thing. Uh, Andrew Freeman, IEP dividend once uh, once received dividend uh, turn back around to buy more IEP with dividend or, and taxes owed on dividend. If so, is there a way to have dividend repurchase IEP shares not owe taxes dividend? If you if you on your brokerage, select reinvest dividend, then you don't pay taxes on it. it. Just it just takes that and reinvests it into the shares, and then you pay taxes in the end when you sell those shares at some future date. So it just you just tell your brokers to reinvest any dividends you receive, and that's how it goes. Phil Haynes, are you in Finger or ZJYL? I'm in neither. I I paid cursory attention to them. Uh, Finger has been kind of languishing since they're having their, their volatility this summer. Uh, ZJYL, where are they doing right now? They're kind of, they had their spikes hit 12, hit 13. They're still in a volatility stage, stage right now. Uh, they've been as low as 390 back in January and then spiked back up to 14 again. So they're, they're doing a lot of this. Uh, I don't think they have an options chain though. Do they have an options chain? They do not. They have no options chain. I would love to be playing the options chain with that much volatility though, but they don't have one right now, so uh, nothing to do. Super Steve, you said regional banks would say we don't have it. We are done. What do they have? What do they not have? I missed it. They don't have assets. So regional banks are huge on commercial real estate loans. For office buildings, warehouses, manufacturing plants, etc., uh, strip malls, you name it. And commercial real estate is floundering and dying. Uh, uh, so buildings that were purchased in 2019 for $500 million are worth less than $100 million today. And those a lot, a lot of the loans on those buildings are interest-only loans, meaning they have some sort of bond, right? They have to pay interest in the bond for five years. They pay interest only, and then at five years, they're supposed to pay the, the the principal on it. Oftentimes, because interest rates have been low for so long, they would pay the interest, pay the interest, pay the interest, and then when it came time for them to owe the principal, they would issue new bonds, pay off the principal of old bonds, and then pay interest only again. But right now, they got all those bonds at like 1% or 2%, and... When the principal comes due, they can't refinance because now they're refinancing at six to eight percent. So they're gonna be paying way more money than they can get out of the building, especially with rent prices collapsing. So if you've got a building, like say, um, let's say there, there's a you're in a 20 story office building in New York, right? You got a 20 story office building in New York, your chief tenant is someone like Ernst and Young, and they take up 75% of your building. Their lease is coming up this year and work from home has made it so they don't need as much office space. So now rather than the 100,000 square feet of office space they need, they only need 40,000 square feet. And so they're looking for a new space somewhere else and maybe not even in your, in your building. So you're about to lose 70% of, of your renters all at once, right? And there's no one to come in and fill the void because you have an older building. They're going to, if they have the opportunity, Ernst & Young's going to move to a newer building, right? that has more amenities and is cheaper because it's a renter's market. And so you're about to have an empty building with no income, no leaseholders, no renters whatsoever. And you now have a loan of $200 million that's due like in December and interest rates are six to 8%. And you aren't going to be able to refinance to for another $200 million loan because your interest payments are going to be more than you're receiving in rent from what few clients are still in there, right? And the value of your building is no longer $200 million. The value of your building might be $40 million. Being that empty in, in such a, a renter's market, 
No one wants to take that space. So you're just going to walk away. And who holds that bond? A regional bank. You know, Community Bank of New York, right? Uh, they hold that bond. They Depositors put $200 million into their accounts thinking, I got $200 million in this bank. I'm cool. And then uh, Community Bank then took that money and paid for the bond of this, of this, or the construction or ownership of this building. And they begin interest on it, hopefully, you know, making a profit. And they've been fully expecting that when the five years of that, of that bond is up, they get their cash payment from the uh, uh, owner of the building and they do a whole nother bond again. Well, they're not going to get any money for it this time around. That $200 million is going to disappear and be gone forever. And now Community Bank of New York is going to be stuck owning a useless 20 story office building in New York and their, their, their clients, the depositors, their money's gone. Poof, $200 million gone. What the bank term funding program did was it allowed the banks to take these bonds that are essentially worthless because they know they're not going to get, they're not going to get the principal paid off. Right. Uh, and they allowed them to act like those bonds still worth $200 million and borrow $200 million from the government that they will not be able to pay off because they're never getting the money back from their original construction bond or office uh, uh, commercial real estate bond. And the money is just going to be gone. So, so that they create this bank term funding program. All these regional banks are going to default on those because all of the commercial real estate is going to default on them. And all the depositors are going to freak out and have runs on the banks, just like they did with Silicon Valley. And that's, that's it. It's toast. The system is going to collapse and collapse really, 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 really hard and much quicker than people expect. Once it starts to go, it's going to be like dominoes across the entire country. Uh, we've seen like, you know, the seizure of this little Iowa bank because the Iowa bank gave loans to some building in like Atlanta, not even in Iowa and the building, you know, the default on the loans, the little community bank in Iowa went down and that's it. Right. So it's, it's happening everywhere. Joseph Lee, do you think if GME does a dividend, that'll be the end of the game of the game for the shorts? It will definitely be a, a, a win on the battlefield. That's for sure. And as long as they can maintain that dividend, then yeah, the shorts will be paying, you know, a dollar a year for every single short that they did. So let's say they made $5 billion in shorts. They're going to be paying $5 billion a year trying to, to cover the, the payment and lose on all of those. That's not cheap. That's money. That's money's getting spent. And then, you know, the longer the dividends go on, the more solid the price becomes on the stock. Michael O'Hara, Houston, what kind of blue chemicals in those outhouses anyway? I, I don't know. <laughs> blue. Blue's in those. Okay. Uh, All right. Oh, it's 4.30. I get going. Um... See you guys later. We'll do a show Wednesday. I'll probably do a Twitch. I might do one tonight, but probably tomorrow night. And uh, I'll catch you guys on the flip side. All right, cool. Um, have a great day. And if I didn't get to your questions, we'll try to get to them on Wednesday. Or come by the Twitch stream where only like six people ever show up. You can ask me those questions there. And I'll do my best while I'm determining if I'm either in Spain or Portugal. Okay, let's do this one.